China's debt to African country was only about 10 percent oh. of their total debt. So most portion. debts in African country came from the Western developed country, not from China. Some people worry China may follow the step of the Japan. And I think that scenario is unlikely. I think that uh, we are in a very challenging you know, period in the world, but we need to have the you know, confidence on ourselves, and also we need to have the confidence on the good will of humanity. Professor Lee, it's really my honor to have this interview with you. If compared with Western countries, what differences do you think China's sovereign financing to Africa have? China focus on the ways to release the bottleneck mm. of structural transformation, technological innovation, industrial upgrading in African country to enable African country to have the ability to grow dynamically by reducing their infrastructure bottlenecks, by supporting their ability to have technological innovations. And uh, the Western countries, they in general, you know, try to strengthen mm. the institutions the humanity areas like health, education, gender equality, like the governance, like the transparency. And uh, those kind of activities certainly with good intentions, mm. but they do not help them to have a dynamic economic growth. So with this kind of difference in the orientations, I think uh, China can help African country to have the ability of growth, of development by themselves. And uh, this is not only helping the African country, it also be consistent with China's philosophy. We want to be prosperous by ourselves, but we also want to help the other country to be prosperous. We want to be established by ourselves. But we also want to help the other country to be established. And with this kind of cooperation, mm. it's a win-win. Because if African country can be prosperous, they will become a larger market for our goods also. And they will also have the ability to provide more goods, uh, service to contribute to our development also. China's debt to African country was only about 10% oh. of their total debt. Well, so most portion. debts in African country came from the Western developed country, not from China. And currently they have some problem you know, because of the growth in the world slow down, reduce the export from African country to earn their foreign exchanges. And uh, also, because of the monetary tightening in the US, in the advanced country, and uh, causing the interest rate to rise. And not only the African country, they reduce the foreign exchange earning, their ability to pay. Now with a high interest rate, they also need to pay more. I think that those are the main reasons for the debt crisis in African country. So in your opinion, um, what severe challenges does China face if it wants to accelerate its economic recovery and also sustain the growth in the long run? If you look in the uh, superficial, you know, look at the statistic, you'll find the slowdown is due to the investment and the consumption in China have been slower than our expectation. But the main reason for that also due to the global business cycle. Mm. Because uh, like the US, this year, its growth rate, you know, according to the World Bank's estimation, will be only 1.1%. Mm. And the European countries, their growth rate is even lower. Mm. 
and, and, and so because the slowdown in their growth, causing our export growth to slow down. Yes. And the export certainly is a driver of the growth in China because China currently is the number one trading country in the world, number one exporting country in the world. But the main reason for the slowing down in investment and consumption are related to the export slowing down. I think that China will be able to reach you know, 5.5% or even 6% growth. China is still you know, the fastest growing country in the world. China will contribute to about one percentage of growth in the world. China will still contribute about 30% of the global growth. So China is still the driver of the glo global growth. So what measures do you think China should take to deal with those pressures? Under this situation, certainly Chinese government should adopt certain counter-cyclical interventions mm. by you know, adopting more active physical policy and also adopt more expansionary monetary policy. And with the government, you know, fiscal stimulus, we can generate more invest, investment demand, and which can you know, benefit the private sectors, mm -hmm. will build their confidence for investment, the employment will be generated, and people will have more secure job and a better expectation for their futures and their consumption can also be you know, stimulated. So I think uh, under current situation, the, you know, the government need to play some kind of supporting, facilitating and expansionary role. You have mentioned that China need to further expand physical deficit and further lose monetary policy. So to what levels will these policy responses appropriate without aggravating the structural problem? First, we need to recognize, and certainly I do not mean that the more debt is better. But if you look into the statistics, the Chinese government debt, including the central government and local government, is about 60% of China's GDP, mm. and is among the lowest in the world. We still have a large scope for expansion government fiscal policy in order to adopt counter-cyclical intervention in China. In your opinion, how could China solve the downturn of its uh, property market? First, housing, real estate, mm -hmm. is still the pillar industry in China. And I think they will play a very important you know, function in first accommodating the demand for housing in China because we are still on the process of urbanization. Currently, you know, the urban population is only about 63, 63 64% of yeah. China's total population. And we know high-income country in general, the urbanization rate will reach 80% or more. Right, and so we are still on the process of urbanization. Mm -hmm. When people move from rural area to urban areas, certainly they need to have accommodation, they need to have housing. Mm -hmm. We are still on the process of increasing our incomes. I think housing or real estate mm -hmm. will still be a driver of growth in China. But sometimes real estate is used as a vehicle for speculation. And speculation certainly will yes, have some sorry. risk. Mm. Yes. And so we are trying to you know, mitigate mm. the component of speculation and emphasize the component, component of you know, housing. Some people worry China may you know, you know, follow the step yeah, of the Japan. Yeah. And I think that scenario is unlikely because certainly you know, some households, they have uh, debt related to the purchase of housing, mm. okay? And some companies, certainly they also 
and some that related to housing, uh, investment and so on. But the debt itself not necessarily will cause in the you know, balance, balance sheet recession. Mm -hmm. Because on the one hand, we need to look at the debt ratio. Mm -hmm. But on the other hand, you also need to look at the growth of income. If you can have continuous growth of income, mm -hmm. that will not be an issue. The key issue is that whether mm -hmm. we will be able to continue to have dynamic you know, growth. The case of Japan is that after the 1991, the mm -hmm. birth of bubble, Japan, the economy recession is mainly because they don't have new industry to emerge. Mm -hmm. They don't have you know, continuous technological innovations. But after the Plaza Accord, mm -hmm. Japan voluntarily or involuntarily, mm -hmm. they gave up their semiconductor industries. However, I think the scope of technological innovation and industrial upgrading in China are still, you know, very large. Mm -hmm. And I, I'm sure China will continue to have technological innovation and industrial upgrading to raise the productivity and with that income of the household, profit of the companies will increase. Uh, we all know that China is facing those restrictions from uh, some foreign countries, the US in particular, in those high-end industries such as the chip or the semiconductor. Do you think China by itself can make big, big, great throws in this sector? I think China has reached a stage. As long as we think it's mm -hmm. necessary, we will be able to mobilize enough resources mm -hmm. and uh, you know, talents to get breakthrough in those areas. So I do think that as long as we understand what is needed, mm -hmm. we will be able to get breakthrough in those areas. Like the US in particular are attempting to curb or to weaken China's position in the global industrial and supply chains. And in your opinion, what measures should China take to deal with this? I don't think the foreign companies, they have the intention to block the mm. export of their products, products. to China yeah. because that will hurt themselves. And this kind of trade restriction is mainly due to political purpose. Mm. So I think the best way for us is to maintain economic stability by continuous reform our economy and also to maintain dynamic economic growth by pursuing technological innovation and industrial upgrading at the same time by opening our economy, our market to the world. I think that uh, we are in a very challenging you know, period in the world, mm -hmm. but we need to have the you know, confidence Mm -hmm. on ourselves and also we need to have the confidence on the good will of humanity and as long as we do our things right we maintain our stability our growth it's good for Chinese people mm -hmm. and by opening our economy it will be good for the rest of the world and I hope we can join hands to promote stability and growth and uh, betterment in the world. Yeah. Right. Okay. Thank okay. you. Thanks. Uh.